people got together uh, under a, a real cooperative and uh, formed this group. Uh, the problem was that it was a, an $8 million project run by housewives. That generation is almost gone that, that built it. You know, it's, it's beautiful, it's wonderful. I wish if we could have a time machine, we'd go back. <laughs> <laughs> Crossfield Hills uh, started in uh, 1946 as something called the Mutual Housing Association. They tried to gather people together who wanted to live cooperatively and who had shared values of wanting the community to be open to all, even though in truth it didn't really attract that many people um, who were that d diverse racially or ethnically. This was primarily a Jewish uh, population, very politically to the left, if not almost commie pinko. And they wanted the architecture to be uh, modern and advanced, to sort of reflect their, their attitudes as well. Every architect in Los Angeles was interested in this project at some point. Well, they originally uh, interviewed several architects, including Richard Neutra. And no cooperative housing of this scale had ever been attempted in the United States. Not a single architect that designed any one thing. It was basically a, a collaborative uh, of the architects working. This was a time when virtually all property in Los Angeles had racial covenants attached to the land. The FHA had uh, put some restrictions on this development. One is that they wouldn't uh, lend to modern architecture. The other is that we had to have restrictions, no blacks and no Chinese. Now, while neutral housing actually only had one minority member of all these hundreds of people, because of the racial covenants, they asked them to leave. It was, a, it was a threat to our community, and it was certainly against the spirit, the progressive spirit, the liberal uh, views of this community that started. We have a lot of you know, really wealthy people come here because of the zip code, and they think they can just tear these down and build a 12,000 square foot mansion. So some of it certainly does look out of place. You know, we just need to educate people before there's nothing left. People buying into the community understand the history and understand that they're buying into a precious part of modernism, of, of modernist history in, in LA, and they treasure that, and they restore them for the most part. You live in a sculpture. If you had an Alexander Calder sculpture, and you could live in it, you know, you'd be living in this multi-million dollar work of art. And that's what good architecture is. It's homes as art. We get to live in this beautiful sculpture with these sloping ceilings, these wonderful windows. And of course, it's positioned to just take advantage of the, the view. We see the mountaintops from our kitchen table. We watch the sunset. And, I mean, it's beautiful. It was wonderful to see a new generation looking at things through their eyes, appreciate the beauty of these mid-century designed homes.